Phil Ebener here with VideoSchoolOnline.com and another After Effects tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how you can attach objects such as text, video, or images to flat surfaces in your video, such as a wall, a fence, the floor, anything, even with moving camera. So let's head into After Effects and learn how. All right, so here in After Effects, this is the clip that I'm going to be showing you how to actually attach text or objects such as video clips, images, logos, anything to walls. You can also use this technique for attaching things to the ground or really any sort of flat plane inside one of your video clips. So this is the easiest way that you can do it now in After Effects. You used to have to do things like tracking motion and attaching things to track null objects and things like that. Now they have this cool track camera button here within the tracker options that we're going to be using. So let's back up and show you how to do this from scratch. So I'm going to take my video clip that I'm using, this walls and fences clip, and drop it into a new composition. So this is just a little pan handheld that goes from the wall of my studio and looks over my backyard up to the fence. So I'm going to actually trim this clip into about 15 frames. The fewer frames you have, the easier it's going to be for After Effects to basically track your camera and the less intensive it's going to be on your computer. So short clips generally work better. Of course, you might have a long clip and you might have to use a long clip. But for this video, I'm just going to trim my comp work area by bringing in the endpoint of the comp to about 15 frames, going up to composition and choosing trim comp to work area. Now, when I apply the track camera effect by selecting this clip and then choosing track camera, it's only going to be analyzing those keyframes within this composition right now. So I'm going to go ahead and let it analyze and then we'll catch up right when it's done. All right, so now depending on how your clip was rendered, you might find track points in your clip. If you don't see any track points, go down to the advanced options and change the solve method from auto to detect to something like mostly flat scene. It's going to resolve and now you're going to see a lot of track points uh, basically trying After Effects trying to see the flat surfaces of your scene. And if you go through the entire clip, you'll see that there are tracking points all over the place trying to determine where points are where flat surfaces are. And you can play around with these depending on the type of shot you have. Uh, first, you tr wanna make sure you try auto to detect, but depending on the clip, it might not work. All right, so now you should also see a target. If you don't see the target or if you see like a big red lines, you might need to change the target size, make it smaller. So you can see if I do that, it makes it smaller or make it larger so that it's easier to see. I'm gonna leave mine at 100. All right, so here you can see that we have this target area and I'm what I'm basically trying to do is find a spot that looks like the target is flat up against this wall. If I wanted to put text on this back fence right here, I would go over here and try to find a spot between points that looks somewhat flat. But I wanna add text over to this wall, so I'm gonna go right about there. I think this one works good. So in between these three points, it's creating that target. Now, if I right click this, I have two or multiple options, but the two I wanna walk through are create text and camera and then create solid and camera. If I choose create text and camera, that's going to create a new text layer in our project down here. So in our timeline, we can double click our text or we can just double click the text right in our composition window. And now we can say whatever we want, the office. So you'll notice though that this text is flying off the edge of our wall. And so we're going to actually move it later. But if I scrub through the timeline, you can see that it is basically stuck or pinned to the wall. Even if the camera goes out of frame or the wall goes out of frame, that text is stuck there. So now what we wanna do is just basically move it into the right position. So if we go down to our transform tools underneath our text, drop down that arrow for the office text and then under transform, we can move these things around such as the orientation. If you do want to basically make any manual adjustments to the rotation of your text, you can do that. You can go and change the position with these position keyframes here 
or using the selection tool, you can take these arrows that are in the composition window itself and basically click on them. So the X arrow, if I click it and drag left to right, we can move the office text left or right. The green arrow up or down. So I'm basically just trying to get this in the right spot. And you can tell that something that's cool is as I move the text towards us, it starts to get bigger. So After Effects knows that there's this perspective in the shot. And so if we're moving this closer, it's actually going to get bigger, just like it would naturally. So I'm just going to make a couple quick changes to the orientation, which is basically similar to the rotation. Move it down right in that spot. And now that looks pretty good. Awesome. So now that text is stuck there. We can play through it. And that's looking pretty good. A couple things that you can do to make your text or any object look a little bit better and more natural is to add motion blur. So under this little column right here with the three circles, check on the motion blur tab and make sure that you enable motion blur up here in the overall composition settings to make sure that it's actually enabled. So when you play through or when you export, it actually is going to apply that motion blur, which is natural to have that sort of blurring as you pan the camera around. You can see that the window of this wall right here and the window frame starts to get blurrier the faster we pan over. And the same should happen with the office text. The other thing you can do to make it look a little bit more natural is play with your blend modes. So if you click this toggle switches modes button down here to see the mode option and drop this down, you can choose different blend modes. For this, maybe linear burn might look good. You can also use the keyboard shortcut shift and then the plus or minus button on your keyboard next to the delete key to basically shift scroll through these. So maybe something like this, vivid light, looks pretty good and makes it look a little bit more natural like it's actually a part of this scene. Cool, so that's basically how you do it. I'm gonna show you how to do it with an object which could be sort of any sort of image or logo or even video clip. So if you go back to your clip, one thing you notice again is that you might not see your tracked points. So go ahead and click the 3D camera tracker in your effects controls to get back your track points. And again, I'm going to try to find a spot that's on here that basically matches this off this wall. So I'm going to try to find that same point, which I think I was a little bit further in the timeline. And if you can't find the same exact point, you might want to just start with one. So I'm going to click there, right click. And now I'm going to just choose create solid. So now when I create a solid, you see that we have this tracked solid orange block right here. And if I go through and scrub through the timeline, that orange block is there. So what I want to do is replace that orange block with a logo. The easiest and best sort of workflow for that is to pre-compose this solid. So if we go right click, choose pre-compose, or if you just select layer and press command shift C on a Mac or control shift C on a PC, and then just click OK, it creates a pre-composition, meaning a composition within this composition. I can go into this pre-comp by double clicking and now you just see that orange square, which is what is inside this pre-composition right now. And I can replace it with my logo, for example. So I'm going to drop my logo into this comp, delete the tracked orange object, which is totally fine to do now. Put my logo in, scale it down so it's within this frame. If you need to change the size of the frame, just press Command K on a Mac or Control K on a PC or go up to composition settings to change the size. So say you want this to be 500 by 500 pixels or 1920 by 1080 for a video that is 16 by nine or 1280 by 720. You can change the aspect ratio of this pre-comp right here. I'm going to leave it at it as is, but now look what happens when I go back to the walls and fences, we have this logo right here. So I might have to move this around, change the rotation or the orientation just a little bit but let's get this right above here like so. Let's drop it down. Let's drop down our transform tools, play with our orientation just a little bit. After Effects does a good job, but it's not perfect. So something like that. And now we are pretty much good to go. Again, you can change the blend mode. You can add motion blur. 
to make it look a little bit more natural in this space. But that's pretty much it. That's how you add and attach objects or text to walls, to grounds, to any flat surface in your clip. Now, bear in mind that the better your clip, the clearer, the sharper, the more flat the object is, the slower your movement is, uh, everything like that will make it easier for After Effects to track your movement and to give you enough track points to, to actually place objects on those flat surfaces. If you're doing your own shot, it's too blurry, it's too shaky, it's not in focus, things like that, you're going to have a tougher time. What you can do is under this advanced tab within the 3D tracker effect, you can choose check on detailed analysis. And that might be able to get you some more track points. So play around with that. Um, but usually After Effects does a decent job if you have a nice big flat object with different points that it can see because basically it sees all these different points with different colors and different textures and different um, different exposures basically and that's how it can track those different points within your shot. So if it's just one big white wall it's going to have a hard time compared to something like this where it has all these different things in the shot that it can see. All right, thanks so much for watching and that's how you attach text and objects to walls, floors, and flat objects in your videos. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments. And if you're looking to take your skills to the next level, make sure you head over to videoschoolonline.com where we have premium courses, more free tutorials and articles, guides and all kinds of stuff that will help you become a better creator. Thanks so much for watching and have a beautiful day.